Why am I in the floor of my kitchen? Because seeds have sprouted and I tried something really weird. I sprouted them in my oven. Yeah. With the oven light, our electric stove stays 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty optimal for your hot peppers and for your tomatoes. And in four days, my tomatoes sprouted, which is incredible. So all I did, nothing crazy, <laughs> was put my seed starts in here, covered them with, you know, just a little bit of soil. And then I put my thermometer right here. And just as I was in the kitchen, I would check on it. And if I needed to cook and use my oven, then I would just temporarily put them out on the countertop. And then when the oven had cooled back to, you know, a neutral temperature, then I would put my seeds back in here. So I thought to share just in case that's something you wanted to try, if your house is drafty or you don't have like a really consistent warm temperature um, for your seeds to get started strong, this actually worked. So just wanted to share. So once everything's sprouted, first thing it needs is sunlight. A sunny windowsill will work great. I have a grow light and just have everything greening up under the grow light. The grow light needs to be about three inches above the seedling. Um, and it also needs to be on longer than the actual like day length. Um, so if your plants are in a windowsill, then they're going to be with the natural rhythm of the sun coming up and down. If you're using a grow light, it's not quite the same thing as sunshine. So I think it's recommended like, to have them under a grow light for 16 to 18 hours. Um, another setup we have right here are just regular um, LED lights. They are 6,500 Kelvin, which is really close to the optimal light of 7,000 Kelvin that plants need to survive. Um, and these will just raise and lower as, you know, seeds grow and sprout. Um, as you can see here, we're anticipating starting a lot more things. I will be growing some uh, perennial herbs and flowers for our garden this year and we're ready. The way that I sow these seeds is I just put tops, not topsoil, <laughs> just regular potting soil all the way up to the top of these cells. And you might notice a pattern. Some of this one's more, more like it back here. Let me see if I can get over there. There we go. So I put one seed, two seed, three seed. And as they grow, I will choose the biggest and bestest plant and transfer them to something like this. So this is just a used yogurt cup. And what I will do is poke a hole in the bottom or put several drain holes. I could put it on the outside um, or in the center. It looks like the way that this is, it's gonna be better for me to put it on the absolute bottom. Put some drain holes there. And then this is just recycle. It's not a meat platter. It's a, um, I think it had like peppers or something on it. So I will either put lots of water here and allow it to soak up what it needs or water heavily from the top. Tomatoes are really, to encourage like deep roots, you're gonna want to water them from the bottom. If you just water on the surface and it doesn't get all the way through, it doesn't drain, then they are um, gonna have less of a better root system, if that makes sense. So that's what we'll do for tomatoes and also for peppers as they get bigger. Um, we don't really want them to crowd in these pots and honestly, you know, having one plant per little section here will be fine. Um, but once the true leaves come off, and the true leaves are these little tiny leaves right here. These are the first ones that are helping them make their food. When they fall off and they get some leaves on them, that would be a good time to evaluate what's gonna be the best plant 
to keep and transplant into something larger. And when it comes to potting mix, it really doesn't matter. You just want something that's not like super heavy. Um, if you're growing uh, food, you might want to look for something kind of organic, something that's not, uh, you know, have artificial um, growth things in it, if you know what I mean. Um, this is just regular potting soil that I brought inside in a container because you're in my laundry room. And um, it has vermiculite, that's the white stuff that really helps with uh, moisture to be like maintain in the soil that seeds need to germinate properly and um, the soil doesn't need to be soaking it needs to be wet it needs to be wet so I've just been using a spray bottle and it's worked out really well yeah that's that's what I've done. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or find me on Instagram. I'm, I'm there every single day. Love Instagram. I love you guys on Instagram. So if you have questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if I don't know the answer to a certain question, I'd be happy to point you in a direction where you might could find the answer. So I just went and filled up my bucket with some more dirt. And while I'm waiting for it to warm up, I thought I would show you how I had my seeds organized. So these right here are seeds that I'm going to start very soon. Um, probably not tomatillo, <laughs> but the rosemary, the foxglove, excuse me, rosemary, foxglove, verbena, and then coleas for my hanging pots. Those are all hopefully going to fit in there. And then I need to put that back uh, in one of these April things. So what I have are, uh oh, I'm missing a little blue thing. Anyway, I have my cold crops. These I have to go through and put them where they belong, but these all start in April. So these are either direct sow or things that will be for, um, what am I trying to say? They will be for late summer. And then I have these that are also going to be for spring and summer gardening, all these things in March. And then these are what I've started already some of them, uh, tomatoes and peppers and greens, which could technically go in the cold, but I decided to do all of the greens since most of those, you know, like have special needs. So hopefully this will work out really well. And then here in my sketchbook, I've just kind of started to outline, let me see if I can find, outline plants that work with each other companion plants to help me so like if I'm growing okra I can plant these things next to it and this just kind of gives me a quick guide um, as I learn how to do succession planting like what I can plant where something used to be and then over here is what I am starting so what I'm doing is like okay these are all of the tomatoes I'm doing and I'm starting and on, I need to add, I just put where I bought it and what year it was packed for. So then I just need to put like when I started it here next to it. Same thing with the eggplant and the peppers. So these are all started except for the tomatillo. And then these will be started today, hopefully. So I'll just put the date that I started them and I'll have like a running tally of our 2021 garden that way, if I lose one of the seed packages, then I can look here and see exactly what type it was that I grew. Hey everyone, out here by the garden, if you remember, I had a big huge piece of cardboard there. And what I've done is cut it into the dimensions of the raised beds that I want to have because we have extra wood. This is the same scrap stuff that we use to make these garden beds over here. So we're gonna use them 
and put more beds to expand the footprint of the garden. To me, this is always a fun part of planning and I'm very visual. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking I might like that. And then this area right there would be the entrance, the new entrance for the garden area. Um, so that way, as time allows and, and get rid of things, we can build this whole section up. This one, like I've mentioned in other videos, this area is a no-go because it's, you know, not a, not a good thing. So we'll try this and see how it works. Okay, here's the progress that's been made. Can you tell what it's gonna be? I know, it's kind of hard to visualize. <laughs> this part right here is gonna be the entrance going to extend the footprint of the garden out this way. There'll be four beds along the back. Where Amy is, is like a walkway in between the bed. And then there's two here in the front. I hope, I hope we have enough wood to do that. So these are about four foot long. And then we have a couple more boards back here that we can cut in half. And so in total, it's going to take like three, four foot boards. Yeah because you'll cut the one that's a four foot board in half to cap the ends of the garden bed.